Bienvenido al Tesoro Escondido, Heilbronn University. Yeah, I thought that might be a nice opening. Um, maybe I will spend a few words on myself. I'm Simon Fauser. Thank you very much for the warm, welcoming introduction. Um, I'm here today with my colleague uh, Travis Dilton to let you know a bit about what we are offering. I know that by now we are maybe um, not that much known, but that will be changing in the next few minutes. So, um, yeah. I'm with the university for about 10 years now. Before that, I had been um, consulting companies in market analysis and business plans. And then I had been working with McKinsey for about four years, which is a strategy consulting company. And today I'm uh, very happy to um, to present Hybron University uh, for you because we have well, many, many international students already, but we are looking pretty much forward in attracting even more of those international students because we are a pretty international place that you will get to know, I think, in a few minutes. So I'm really happy to be here with you and um, I hope the audio connection is good. At least this is what we um, checked out previously. And uh, well, if there's questions, of course, you can always use the chat, right? Um, so we are sort of splitting up. I will do the first part of the presentation and then Travis will do the second part of the presentation. I will be focusing on our bachelor programs and he will be focusing on the master programs and of course also the student life. That is also very important uh, if you're considering moving to Heilbronn, obviously. So thank you very much for joining. I will try to share my screen now. Um, and as it looks like it's working, so first of all, um, we are located in Germany, as you might have heard previously. Uh, Germany is by population, uh, not by size, but by, by population, the biggest country in Europe. Um, maybe you have heard about uh, it, and actually um, we are here in the southern part uh, of Germany, as you can see. I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Germany. We have sort of a coastal area in the north, and then in the south, we've got mountains, uh, the Alps, maybe you got across that. And Heilbronn is just situated here, as you can see. Um, it's, if you like, at the sunny part of Germany, uh, we have by sure the most uh, sunshine. So I think it's a very nice destination. What else do we have to offer? Uh, I will uh, let you know in a few seconds about many, many famous companies that are situated here. And we are certainly in a, one of the most thriving regions in Germany. If you look by GDP growth, and um, we actually have a quite a nice uh, growth story as a region in total, as a city, and also as a university. We are still a pretty young university. However, uh, we have seen quite nice growth rates, and um, I think we are um, well set up for a bright future. This is what I could uh, say currently. You've got many, many options also for traveling. Uh, obviously, so many of our international students use their stay here for also getting to know Europe, and this is also a very nice starting destination. As you can see, it's 600 kilometers away from Paris, for example. On the other hand, uh, it's about also 600 kilometers away from Vienna. Um, and about 600 kilometers from Hamburg. So it's really sort of uh, in the midst of Europe. You can get everywhere uh, pretty easily. It's a medium sized um, German town. Medium means a, a bit more than 100,000 inhabitants. Um, yeah, it's a pretty handy town. As I said, it's it's nicely growing with nice uh, newly brought up districts, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, the city is nice and especially the surrounding of the city is nice. I said that the weather is good <laughs> uh, and this is also manifested by the by the fact that we have uh, a very winery destination here. So it's really at the heart of uh, Germany's red wine production. Um, and this is uh, well, also an expression that the weather is not too bad. Otherwise, a uh, winery would not be such a big business here. Um, also, culturally speaking, we have many things to offer. If you look at the Michelin Guide, for example, uh, it's a big tradition in the region but that we have the best restaurants uh, in Germany, etc. Um, so it's a very decent place, as you can maybe also uh, get to know from the pictures. What about the companies? Um, we are very, very famous for medium-sized companies or previously medium-sized companies. If you look at the company density, 
uh, the successful um, uh, world market leaders. It's actually uh, the region number one in Germany where we have most uh, so-called hidden champions. Uh, so companies who are world market leaders in very niche areas and that are maybe not that much known, but that are pretty, pretty successful. They make very good money and most of them are family businesses. So also if you think about um, a work um, and um, safety of the working place, uh, they are nice addresses. Of course, there's also some bigger companies like Audi, which is a car manufacturer in Porsche uh, is also there, for example. But there's also these very famous medium-sized companies like Helga, they are doing cleaning equipment. Maybe you got across them um, or what makes the region now in the, in the last few years very, very successful is also retail companies like Lidl uh, and Kaufland that are also strong in the region. Um, Heilbronn is here as a city, as you can see, and this is sort of the region that um, uh, where Heilbronn is the headquarter with. We have many campuses. I think this is maybe not too uh, interesting, just uh, maybe one number. We have uh, around 9,000 students on four campuses and our main campus is called the Bildungscampus, uh, which is in English sort of the education campus, if you like, and we we actually have about three and a half thousand students here. We've got other places, as you can see, but I think this is too much into detail. More interesting is what we are going to present product-wise today. This is the bachelor programs um, of the Faculty of International Business. Um, this is why my professorship is located and where also the responsibilities of Travis um, are located. We have, of course, programs also in engineering, informatics, etc. But we are here today for presenting our programs in business. Uh, what is nice about the campus that it's uh, pretty new, say in the last five, six years, nearly all the buildings had been built. Uh, so if you would go back seven years, there would have been no building um, and all of them uh, are well, have been erected in the last couple of years. So it's a brand new campus still. Uh, we have a very, very nice facilities. Um, right. Uh, I think there's not much to be said. This is, by the way, also possible because there's a huge foundation of the retail company Lidl and Schwarz supporting uh, the university. Actually, they, bu they build all the houses uh, and all the facilities on campus and they rent it to the state so that as a university, we can simply use it. So infrastructure wise, uh, it's a nice location. Now coming to the Faculty of International business. As you can see from the name, international is not something uh, that is just written there, but it's it's really at the core of what we are. Um, we have many international students. You can see that we have about 30 plus uh, national um, um, representatives of uh, students every semester, actually. And uh, what is, uh, we have about 90 partner universities worldwide. Um, we'll be showing you a map just in a few seconds where you can see in which uh, countries we also have partner institutions. So we are pretty, pretty international and something that is not mentioned here. Also, our staff is pretty international. If I think about the colleagues, we have colleagues uh, from Argentina, uh, professors. We have colleagues from the Ukraine. We have colleagues uh, from South Africa. We have colleagues from uh, wherever, um, from the US, US colleague, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not only the students that are international, but it's also the, the faculty body that is pretty much international. And I think this is really um, important also for you to accommodate yourself as a student because we all have a certain international surrounding. I'm a German, but I've been living abroad for three years in many, many countries. So in Australia for half a year, in South Africa for half a year, for example. Then I've been living in France for half a year, one and a half years in Italy. And now I'm a half, half a year in Denmark, etc. So uh, we really have an international uh, surrounding here. Now we are going to focus on these very specific four Bachelor of Arts programs that are located in the Faculty of International Business. 
Um, before we are starting off with that, just uh, maybe another number about 150 international students come to Heilbronn University uh, each and every year. So it's we have quite a nice inflow of international students. We also have to mention at this stage that we are EFMD accredited. So the EBIS program, which is International Business Intercultural Studies, um, is uh, internationally accredited since uh, Quite some years already and of course there's also various students clubs etc um, uh, available uh, i think this is something that you would expect coming back uh, to the more than 90 partner universities they are nearly uh, well they are nicely spread out uh, through the world and we have quite nice relations here now, if you look at the programs uh, or the products of a, of a university, if you like a bit more uh, in detail, we see at the Bachelor of Arts sites, we've got the programs in international business. So this is the previously IBIS program, international business, intercultural studies. This together means IBIS, okay? International business, intercultural studies. Um, this is the biggest study track that we have in the faculty and of course it's truly international and you will get to know some details just now. Then what we also have is the tourism management track. This is the second larger program uh, that we are offering. Um, well, it prepares the students obviously for the, uh, for the tourism industry and then we have uh, the hotel and restaurant management track. Um, Big hotel chains, for example, um, are really uh, wanting to have our graduates um, as one example here in this program. And then we've got a special uh, type of program that is called wine management. How does it come? Well, I've been previously, uh, I previously mentioned that we are in the biggest red wine region of Germany. And this is why we offer also a study program called uh, wine marketing and management. Um, it's of course for the for the vineyards um, uh, willing to also sell their wines internationally. And actually, the German wines had been quite successful in the last couple of years. Uh, growth rates had been nice, and also export rates. Then Travis will focus on presenting our Master of Arts programs. Here we have three. Uh, the International Business Intercultural Management, uh, which is sort of the IBIS program for the master, if you like. Then we have the International Tourism Management, uh, one international uh, program for tourism. And then we've got the Sustainable Tourism Development Program, which is the youngest here in terms of masters that we offer. If you look at uh, which certificate you get once you graduate, you see that all of them are Bachelor of Arts programs. Uh, that means that, of course, you are also required quantitative skills, but they are not hardcore quantitative programs. Uh, this makes it a bit more distinct to such programs like Bachelor of Science, for example, where you will have uh, much more quantitative uh, courses. We also offer them, but this is not the main focus. Our main focus is more on the management, on the doing business side, than only on quantitative analysis. Good, maybe let's start with the biggest program, which is the International Business Intercultural Studies program. All of our bachelors last seven semesters and all of them end with a thesis. A thesis is a scientific project, typically around 60 to 80 pages that you write on a specific topic. And of course, you agree upon the topic uh, with your supervisor. You will have a second supervisor and uh, this then closes down or, or at the end uh, makes an important milestone, the final milestone of your study program. Um, we all have 210 ECTS bachelor programs. Um, well, this is uh, the number of credits that you earn. What is nice about it that uh, with 210 uh, ECTS, you can um, typically start with nearly all masters available on the market. Um, if there's masters who require 240 ECTS, typically it's possible that you gain the additional 30 ET ECTS uh, at the beginning of the master's program. Um, but it equips you really for all the master's programs uh, in terms of ECTS. Uh, so the, the gap is not uh, too big. Uh, if you opt for a 180 ECTS program, it could well be the case that you're not accepted in a master's program because the gap 
uh, could be too big. So this is why we still stay with the 210 ECTS, which is, I think, a nice, uh, a nice approach to that. So what is the core of the program? Of course, it's uh, about management, um, business functions, but, and this is maybe most interesting, is this is not a pure international business program, but it's called International Business Intercultural Studies. So what does that mean? It means that you choose a language and cultural area that you will be studying uh, in your study program. And that makes it very attractive to many students, actually. I will get uh, closer to that uh, just in a few seconds. Uh, the idea is, of course, also that the foreign language is integrated into the studies. At the end of the day, you will uh, acquire also language skills. And typically, you will have one semester dedicated to an internship. Uh, study abroad is, of course, highly encouraged, right? Um, and about 85% by now are of our courses are offered in English. We're working on that to get this uh, in the near future, hopefully to 100%. By now, it's say about 85%. So if you look about the content, uh, maybe a bit more closely, you see, first of all, this is the seven semester schedule. First, second semester, which is sort of the basis uh, uh, study. Then we have the main studies, which is the third and fourth semester. And then you have typically in the fifth semester, you have so-called internship or practical semester, where you work in one of these famous companies that I had been mentioning previously, for example. Um, and then you have the sixth and the seventh semester where you sort of finish off your studies and you will write your thesis um, typically in the seventh semester. This is what you have here at the very end, the bachelor thesis. So the first program is the IBIS program, International Business and the Cultural Studies. Um, it, well, to make it short, in all of the four programs, you have sort of introductory lectures, uh, for example, in research methods, business English, foreign language, cultural studies, um, etc. And then in the third and fourth semester, you have, will have more specific courses also depending on your uh, area of uh, um, or in, on your focus area. Uh, of course, in, in, in management, you can, for example, choose uh, finance. You can, of course, uh, for example, choose marketing. You can choose human resources uh, or personnel, etc. And depending on your focus areas, you will have uh, specific courses in these focus areas starting from especially the fourth semester onwards. Once again, most students are away in the fifth semester because they will do their internship. Uh, this is, of course, a great opportunity also for international students to get exposure to current uh, companies. Uh, by the way, German companies are really hiring uh, at the moment. Uh, for many years, also throughout the crisis, we had an unemployment rate Germany-wide of uh, lower 3%. And in Baden-Württemberg, traditionally, which is the state where Heilbronn is located, the southwestern part, it's even lower. So it should be around 2% or something. So we really have nearly no unemployment and uh, companies are really looking for, for staff. And then, as previously mentioned, semester six and seven sort of make up this, uh, the studies. So the IBIS program um, um, is based on the two areas, as I said, sort of a management track and sort of the cultural track. Um, this is what we have here, the culture area and language study. So what kind of culture tracks do we offer? You choose one out of these. You can either choose Arabic and Orient, including uh, North Africa. Um, you can choose French and Francophone world. You can choose Russian and Eastern Europe, or you can choose Spanish and Hispanic countries. Um, this is the three culture area studies that we are, uh, sorry, the four that we are offering here. And of course, you will always uh, acquire, if you don't have it already, uh, the necessary language skills. You will learn French, you will learn Russian, you will learn uh, Spanish, obviously, and you will learn uh, Arabic. And then you can do within the management track the specializations. Once again, this is especially throughout the semesters four to six, where you will have the specializations, as I have been mentioning, for example, finance, 
for example, human resource marketing or a bit uh, more general is the international management track. And the program is since years already EFMD accredited. The second program is the tourism management. Um, he, you do not have these cultural studies. However, you have options for languages as such. Of course, you can acquire uh, Arabic if you like, French, Russian, Spanish, English, uh, and then also some sort of special English uh, tracks, how to do business, uh, etc. And you have more tourism specific specializations, obviously, uh, for example, the destination management or the business travel or here, for example, also uh, the travel organization. This is also where I'm typically doing uh, a lecture in tour operator management, just to give you one example. Of course, this is industry specific uh, specializations. Here you will have in the study track many excursions. Uh, however, also in the other study tracks, you typically have uh, quite some excursions. Another study uh, program, the third one, uh, is the hotel management. Here you will have many classes together with the tourism management um, as students, but you will have, of course, different specializations, for example, especially or exclusively designed for the demand of the hotel uh, industry. For example, hospitality development and real estate or B2B sales or also system catering or food management, uh, just to name a few. Um, right. The last program that I uh, want to present is uh, the Bachelor in Wine Marketing and Management. Um, this is a very uh, sort of special program for the region. Uh, it deals with wine, how to uh, exploit wine, um, also how to shape to a certain extent the taste of wine. So you will also have culinary courses here. You will also have sensory courses, or sensoric, sorry, uh, courses here. Uh, for example, this is a picture that had been taken here. So you will, of course, also taste different spirits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, however, it, uh, its main focus is really on marketing. So how do you sell? How do you advertise? How do you ship? How do you export, uh, etc. cetera, um, uh, the final product? Specializations are wine tourism. Um, here you see the overlap between tourism and uh, wine management. Of course, wine tourism uh, is part of culinary tourism, for example. Um, quite uh, interesting. And you also have hospitality, or of course, you can focus on the luxury uh, side of the business. And of course, these students will typically go, and this is why you see here the last picture, to uh, many of these uh, often family-owned vineyards uh, in the region. We can also do wine tasting. Uh, they will do a tour. You will get to know the seller, uh, what kind of uh, niche market they are uh, trying to address with their products, etc. Good. Um, now there's two, three slides left, and then I will hand over to Travis already. Uh, what about the entrance requirements? First of all, um, you need to get a so-called technical college entrance qualification, which you typically get once you graduate in your A-levels at your home institution, general higher education entrance qualification, right? And then um, you typically um, need um, a certificate uh, of your studies that you typically get from the school, um, right? This is relevant. It's the same for all four bachelor programs. In terms of proficiency in German, we typically ask for the B2 level. Uh, sometimes also the C1 level uh, is possible. And there is also another option if you don't have any German knowledge. Uh, Travis will uh, just in a few minutes explain how you can even without German knowledge uh, apply because we uh, have created something that we call access to business where also international students without German knowledge uh, can apply. But Travis is going to explain this a bit more uh, in detail in, in a few minutes. Proficiency in English, you see that for IBIS, we actually want to have B1. Um, uh, and for the other courses, it's A2. So TM, HM, and WMM uh, is also A2. So of course, a certain level of English should be there. More information can be, of course, found on the university's website, as you can see here. Um, yeah. 
maybe let's give it a try whether it's working hopefully yes uh, i think it's not taking the uh, the entire link unfortunately yeah it's not taking the entire link well yeah otherwise you just type into your search engine hybron and then undergrad your program and then maybe the study track you're most interested in for example ebis tm hm or um w and mm yeah this is of course up to you, you can um, easily come up with that Okay, now I'm, I have to go back to the presentation quickly. Sorry, it had been closing down, but we are just back. Uh, I have to refresh. Right, this is where we ended off. Okay. So in terms of considerations in the selection process, um, so what is most relevant once you apply? For the, so for EBIS, it's the average uh, grade of university entrance qualification. So of course, the better, uh, the better, uh, the, the higher chances, the grade in English and the affinity to one of the four regions. So now if you are from the Hispanophone world as a Southern, uh, uh, America, uh, the Southern American, of course, for you, it's easy to tell us the affinity uh, for that specific region because you had been living there, your family is there, et cetera, et cetera. So this gives you, of course, a plus for qualification, uh, a plus that a typical German student does not have to such an extent. So here you have a quite nice advantage. For the hotel and restaurant, of course, it's also especially uh, relevant if you have been working, studying or living abroad for at least three months. And if you have been working in the industry before, maybe during a summer job or something. Tourism, likewise, um, also subject related vocational training here is very important. Maybe you had been also working in the, in the tourism sector before and wine marketing and management. It's at the end of the day, uh, the great um, that determines um, accessibility or selection, yes or not, right? Now I'm coming to the sort of uh, um, access to business. So don't have the required German level uh, that I said just now in the in the entrance qualification. So if, for example, if you do not have B2 level uh, yet, uh, we created this opportunity, which means you can complete the preparation of your application, just like a general application. And you have then two additional semesters with no tuition fees available, meaning that you can come to Heilbronn University for one year ahead of your studies for actually getting intensive German language courses and also um, participate in the first uh, first lectures. For example, uh, business administration. This is the course in the first semester that uh, I taught last semester. Uh, so here you can already participate uh, with very, very little uh, German knowledge, if you like. Um, of course, you could also do that with statistics, for example, or intercultural management. So we offer the following. We offer for one year an extensive uh, German language course um, that enables you then after one year to easily follow the studies. And besides, if you like, you can already start to study. Maybe. Uh, you go for the option and say, okay, the first half a year I will only do the language course and then the next half a year I'm so good in German already that uh, as an entry, um, as an entry uh, lecture uh, for the first semester, you feel pretty much equipped and then you can say, okay, why not trying uh, to follow one or two lectures already? And then once you're accepted, of course, after that year, uh, the courses that you had been taken simply are accepted for your uh, continuing studies. So I think this is really a nice option that we can offer um, here for uh, non German speakers still being able to uh, start what they're studying here. It's really a nice uh, opportunity, I think. Uh, in terms of admission requirements, etc., I think I would now hand over to Travis um, if this is okay. And uh, he will finish off with the access to business and then also 
um, inform you about our master's program. And of course, we are always happy to answer questions then afterwards. Uh, so I will be monitoring the chat now. Thank you already. Um, Travis, you have your own slides, right? Uh, yeah, you should be able to see those now, right? Yes. Okay. Should be here. Okay. Everybody can see it still? And you can hear me okay? Yes, I can see it. Perfect. Okay, so I'm so turning to the chat now and um, put myself on mute. Sounds good. Okay, so thank you uh, for um, for the introduction, uh, Professor Fowser. Um, so I'll just continue real quick uh, with the access to business, and then I'll, I'll give you a little information about myself before I start talking about the master's programs. Um, so the idea of the access to business program is that once you've completed that one year, you would have everything that you need in order to apply as a full-time student. Um, so you will have reached the B2 level of German, um, and then you're able to apply for regular admission into the university. You have to keep in mind that um, your admission is not guaranteed. So um, just because you complete the access to business program, it doesn't mean that you automatically will get a place. Um, but it's it's set so the, the program is, is set up so that uh, we want you to be successful. So, um, you know, we'll do everything we can to get you to the level that you need to get to. Um, and then, as Professor Fowser mentioned, um, you're taking some uh, you're already taking some bachelor's courses um, during the during the access to business program. Um, so if you're admitted into uh, one of our programs, then we would just uh, apply to have those credited towards the bachelor's degree. Um, so you're you're already earning some of the, the credits that you need in order to graduate. Um, the uh, admission requirements here, um, you'll need to have your, your basically it's your high school diploma or your A-levels. You need to have that accredited um, by student colleague constant just to prove that it's um, basically equivalent to the requirements of, um, of our German students. Um, you'll need to prove your English language skills because all of your classes uh, that you'd be taking um, would be in English. Um, so you need to have a high level of English. Um, and then because the access to business program, it actually starts not at a, it's not really intended for somebody that has absolutely zero German knowledge um, because it actually starts, like the intensive course actually starts at an A2 level. Um, so this means that, you know, basically you, you can introduce yourself, um, you know, sentence structure, those types of things. And then at the A A2 level, you're learning more of the higher level uh, grammar rules. Um, so you do, if you if you want to apply for access to business, I would say that you should already start taking, you know, just your entry level German classes so that um, you're ready uh, for A2 once you come. Um, the important thing here is that um, you would need to request information by uh, May 15th, and then the application is due on June 1st. Um, and you can find more information um, at this website here. It's uh, hs-halbron.de slash access to. Um, and then here you can see uh, generally um, the way that the application works, um, the kind of the process that you have to follow. Um, but again, there's there's quite a bit more information available on our website. Um, so now I'm going to switch over to talk about the um, about the master's programs that we offer. But before I, I do that, I, um, as Professor Fowler did at the beginning of his presentation, he gave kind of a short introduction of himself. Um, so my name is Travis Stoltner. Um, as you mentioned, I'm from the United States. Um, I came to Germany in 2016 to actually study uh, one of the master's programs that I'm going to present now. Um, before that, I was a director of human resources for an IT company in Washington, D.C. Um, I did that for about 15 years um, and then decided that it was time for me to go back to school. So I decided to drop everything in the United States and move to Germany. And as you can see, I, I've already been here for about seven years now, so I like it so much that I've stuck around. Um, so it, going through the presentation, um, you kind of get you kind of can benefit from my experience of being a student here as well. So if you have questions about what it's like to be a student, I, I'm happy to answer those questions as well. 
Um, so we offer three Master of Arts programs. Um, all of our programs are three semesters ending with a thesis, um, and this would be a total of 30, or I'm sorry, 90 ECTS. So you do 30 ECTS uh, per semester. Two of the programs are taught entirely in English, um, and those are the International Business Intercultural Management, as well as International Tourism Management. And then we have one program that's taught in a mix of English and German, and that's the Sustainable Tourism Development Program. Um, all three of our master's programs um, are generally very small goals. Um, so, for example, the MIBEM program is 20 students, as is the Sustainable Tourism Development Program, and then an international tourism program admits uh, 15 students per year. Um, we also have excursions uh, in, included in the master's programs um, to get you um, exposed to different businesses and um, to experience some of the cultural things that are available here in Germany. Um, all of our programs have a very strong emphasis on sustainability and interculturalism. Um, so you're not learning just uh, you know, so, um, the hard business subjects like finance and, and marketing. Um, we've, we're really addressing this emerging topic of sustainability um, throughout all of our programs. Um, we also offer the opportunity to study abroad, uh, uh, potentially in, a, in an extra semester, so in a third semester. Um, and what's important, what's maybe more interesting for you as an international person coming to Germany um, is the possibility to do a voluntary internship um, during a third semester. Um, so that gets you a, a good entry into one of the businesses here. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a three, all of our programs are three semester programs. Um, you can see here um, kind of the courses that are included in each of the programs. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail into it while I'm discussing this slide, um, but the main takeaway from here is that all of your classes are going to be in the first and second semester. So all of these classes are here on campus, in person, in Hebron at the Buildings campus. Um, so you physically need to be here for the first and the second semester. Um, and then the third semester is the master's thesis. Um, you don't have to be in Germany while you write your master's thesis. If you choose to just study here for two semesters, you can return home if you like and write your, your master's thesis from your home country. Or if you want to move somewhere else and write your master's thesis as possible as well. Um, what a lot of students do is um, because the, the way that our program is structured, you, you have to register your thesis by the end of the third semester. So what a lot of students choose to do is either take a semester abroad or do a voluntary internship during this third semester and at the end of the third semester register their thesis and then actually write the thesis in the, in the fourth semester. So I would say the majority of the students in our master's programs are actually taking two full years to complete the program, but it is possible to do it in three semesters. So the first program is our International Business and Intercultural Management program. Um, and this is actually the, the master's program that I came to Germany to study. Um, and it prepares students for leadership roles in, in international organizations. So you're, you're not only focusing on like traditional topics like marketing, HR, and finance, um, but the, uh, there's a large, um, a large emphasis on intercultural um, awareness, um, sustainability, and social responsibility during the program. Um, and we, we want our students to exit the program, being able to, to look at different business issues from different cultural perspectives. Um, so, you know, the, the students that are in our program, I would say in the, in the MIBEM program, it's usually about a third of the students are, are non-German. Sometimes this year, for example, it's 50% of the students are non-German. Um, so you're really getting the benefit of working together within your courses with students from different cultures. You're not just learning theoretically um, how people from different cultures work. Um, so it's, it's, really good, um, it's really good preparation for leading international teams um, in your career later on. Um, we also have like this, these cultural area focuses that are integrated into our program. Um, so for your example here, you can see there's a course called Intercultural Communication and Management. Um, and within this course, we focus in specifically on the Arab world, Eastern Europe, Asia, India, and the Spanish-speaking world. 
The next program is our International Tourism Management Program. Um, and this program is designed to prepare um, managers for um, careers in the tourism hospitality environments. Tourism inherently is uh, an international um, industry. Um, so it's it's really uh, preparing our students to, for example, manage um, tourism organizations, whether they're they're local or global organizations. Um, they're prepared to 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 manage tourism activities in a variety in, of different uh, places, as well as in different capacities. Um, some of the courses are integrated with are 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 shared with our students in the MIBEM in, in the International Business Program as well. Um, so I always like to think of our international tourism management students as kind of being the the link between all of our master's programs because they share programs with each of uh, each of the other master's programs. And then finally, we have our sustainable tourism development uh, program. It has the acronym NTE, and that's based on the German name Ottiga Tourismus in Um And as I said before, this is a uh, a master's program that's taught half in German and half in English. Um, the half that's taught uh, in English are held together with students of our international tourism management program. Um, and then the German, uh, the German courses are more focused on um, um, sustainable tourism as it relates to the region that we're in. So, for example, you're doing projects with um, with different businesses or different um, tourism organizations um, that are in the southern Germany area. So you may ask uh, what the requirements are uh, for MIBEM and MITEM. So International Business Intercultural Management and MITEM, they're exactly the same. Um, so basically, um, we require that you have a good or excellent undergraduate degree of at least 210 ECTS. So this means a, a bachelor's degree of, um, of uh, seven semesters or three and a half years. Um, and this, uh, by, and we mean uh, by by excellent or good, we mean an average of 2.5 overall grade, and this uh, 2.5 is based on the German system. Um, we also require high proficiency in English. Um, all non-native English speakers um, have to submit either an IELTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, or Oxford Test of English certificate when they apply. Um, and then because the programs are taught entirely in English, there's no requirement that you speak any German. Uh, for example, when I came to Germany, um, I would say that my my level of German was pretty much non-existent. Um, so um, there's no requirement that you that you speak any German. We do, however, encourage you to learn German while you're here. Um, and there's also we have uh, courses available here at the Donald Compass um, to get you to a level that prepares you to actually enter the workforce um, after your studies. Um, the NTE program um, has slightly different uh, requirements. Um, their degree they accept students with bachelor's degrees in a, a, a broader um, broader range of uh, fields. So not only business studies, but they also accept students with social sciences or environmental studies. Um, they also have a requirement for English proficiency. Um, so you can submit an ILTS, TOEFL, Cambridge, or Oxford test, but they also allow you to submit other proof. Um, this is because the half of their courses are taught in German. The level of English isn't quite as high as the um, as for the other two master's programs. Um, and then obviously, because courses are taught in English, we, they, they do require that you be fluent at a C1 level in German. So um, as far as how we select the, the, our um, students, um, the main criteria is the grade of your bachelor's, your overall grade from your bachelor's. Um, you can actually earn additional points if you've had work experience after, your, after you've finished your um, bachelor's degree preferably in post-related areas. Um, and you can also earn extra points in the selection process if you had international ex experiences during your bachelor's program. So this means either doing a, an internship abroad or, or studying abroad. Um, and with the sustainable tourism development uh, entry requirements, again, it's, it's a large focus is on the grade of your first degree. Um, you also get extra points if you've had some practical experiences after finishing your studies. Um, and then they also take a look at your professional 
um, experience to see if it fits to the degree that you're applying for. So maybe uh, you guys are interested in how you apply for our programs. Um, for uh, international students, um, if you're applying for a bachelor's program, um, first you need to apply to student colleague Constance for the recognition of your high school diploma. Um, and you can only apply to Halbron University once you have the certificate of recognition. Um, and you can find the link uh, to find more information there. Um, as for the colleague, they're independent of the University of Habron or you know, Habron University. Um, so I, we can't give you advice about what you need to do. If you have questions about what needs to be submitted to student colleague Constance, it's best that you contact them directly. Um, the process with student colleague Constance typically takes uh, four to six weeks. Um, so you want to take that into account uh, for the application deadlines. So we recommend if you're applying for the winter semester that you apply to student colleague Constance no later than June 1st um, and for the summer semester uh, by December 1st. Um, so in addition to the student colleague Constance application, um, you also need to, uh, to apply to Halbron University directly. Um, and to do that, you need to first register with hopeschoolstart.de. Um, and then once you've registered there, then you're able to complete the online application directly with Halbron University. Um, the application deadlines for summer semester are January 15th and for the winter semester is July 15th. And these are hard deadlines, meaning that if we don't receive all of your documents by those days, by those dates, um, we're not able to consider you for it. So the, the application process is, is very similar for the master's programs. Um, uh, for the master's programs, you need to have your bachelor's degree and high school certificates both. Um, recognized uh, by student colleague Constance, again, using the same deadlines. Um, and then with that certificate, then you're able to apply to Halbron University directly. Um, all of our master's programs um, have only one intake per year. They all admit students only for the winter semester. So your key dates here would be June 1st for student colleague Constance and July 15th for your application to Halbron University. Um, I maybe should mention on the previous slide, um, for our bachelor's programs, um, our EBIS program, so the International Business Intercultural Studies program, and our Tourism Management program, they admit students both in the summer and in the winter. Um, so you can apply for either of those intake. Um, our uh, hotel and restaurant management and wine management programs, they only start in the winter term. As far as um, what it costs to study here, um, so every student that, that studies at Halbron University, including the German students, have to pay a semester fee of around 160 euros. And this covers like the student union fee, um, public transportation tickets and so forth. Um, in addition to that, all nine EU international students have to pay 1,500 euros per semester. Um, this isn't a, a tuition fee that we implemented here only at our university. It was something that was uh, that was put in place by the state that we're located at in Württemberg um, several years ago. We're not happy about this fee, but unfortunately, it's something that we have to live with. Um, so basically, this means that every semester you would be paying um, six, around 1,600 euros um, at the study here. Um, there are funding opportunities available, and you can find more information about those at the website that you see here. Um, one thing to, to mention about the scholarships that you'll find from Halbron University, most of those are you can only apply for after you've gotten admission. So it's not typically something that you can apply for in advance before you accept your admission. Um, and then you can see here the, the cost of living. Uh, it's not a, a terribly expensive place to live. Um, most, most students have no problem here finding, or being able to finance their studies. Um, you also have the possibility to get what they call a mini job um, while you're here. Um, so that you can earn um, like 450 or 500 euros per, per month tax free. And this can help supplement your income. For living here. I know we're kind of running out of time, but I, I want you because you're probably interested in these things as well. Um, just to give you an idea of what it's like to live as a student here. Um, so we do offer university dormitories. 
Um, most of those are located on our Sondheim campus, which is a neighborhood just a bit south of the city center, but still an easy walk or bike ride to the buildings campus where all of your camp all of your classes are, are gonna take place. Most of our students are living in those dormitories. Um, typically those dorms would have like a, a small kitchenette um, that's shared between two bedrooms or, or it could be more bedrooms, but, but generally you have your own room to sleep in. Um, we also offer on-campus dining here at the Buildings Campus. We have um, a larger cafeteria that serves lunch every day um, at very inexpensive prices for our students. Um, and additionally, we have a, a cafe that's opened um, all day where you can get coffee, for example, or a light snack or just a light lunch. Um, we also have on-campus computer labs. These aren't as popular as they used to be. Um, now everybody has laptops, so they generally are not using the computer labs so much, but they are available if you need those. Um, you also have access to printers and so forth that there's something that you need to print uh, for your lectures or any other study materials. Um, and we do give, um, I think it's around 40 euros worth of printing to students um, every semester. So it's not something that you have to pay extra for. Um, and then we um, are lucky to have a really nice library here on campus. Um, it's called the LIV. Um, it was just completed maybe two years ago. Um, it's one of the largest uh, university libraries in all of Germany. Um, we share this library with other universities that are located on campus. Um, and so you not only have access to a lot of, um, of physical books in the library, but there's lots of space for, for working, um, as well as like private rooms for group work. Um, they also have a really cool media lab where you can do green screen productions, um, where you can record podcasts and so forth. So it's a, it's a really well-equipped uh, library that all of our students can use um, to its full advantage. Um, also, we are the international business faculty, so um, we really like to promote internationalization here. Um, so every semester we have an international day where students from different cultures can have their booth um, and share their cultures with the, the larger student uh, audience. Um, as you can see here, they, they typically, the students will organize um, foods that are typical um, of their countries or their regions. Um, some put on dance performance performances um, that are traditional dance styles of their of their regions as well. Um, so we really like to promote the fact that um, our students are coming from everywhere um, and we want students to learn how to appreciate that. Um, and we also obviously offer some um, different sports and activities. Um, we have a sports complex um, at our Sondheim campus where you can play volleyball, for example. Um, we also have clubs where they play volleyball or um, teach salsa or different types of dance. Um, we have uh, events that are organized by our student unions. Um, sometimes they do excursions to other areas of Germany. Uh, for example, they typically will take an excursion to one of the Christmas markets. Um, you should expect to study and learn a little differently than, than you have maybe in your, your previous education. Um, again, we have culture integrated into all of our programs. So you're going to learn to have this global mindset um, and to be able to work with people from different cultures in a better way. Um, additionally, you have the, uh, the opportunity to learn new languages and to sharpen your communication skills. Um, and I think when you study abroad, you, you learn a lot about yourself, um, about your independence, what you value um, as far as um, the way other people see you, the way that you want other people to see you. Um, I think with it, with any university education, I think you find out a lot about yourself. Um, and then maybe what's really important to some of you is that you want to stay in Germany and work here after your studies. Um, so you're well prepared to do that uh, following the studies. So.